the world of the WWE has not stopped uh, spinning. Uh, Vince is still retired as of right now. We'll see how long that lasts. But some of the the associated family have been uh, speaking, and we haven't heard from Linda in a long, long time. And apparently... And she's associated we, family. She's associated family by marriage at this point, if nothing else. <laughs> um, where was this comment from? How It wasn't the wrestling press. She was somewhere doing something in public. If it's Linda McMahon, I'm going to guess it's some kind of Republican fundraiser or something like that in Florida, because that's where she's based out of, and that's where she's doing most of her work. I'm just guessing, though. I'm not certain. Well, anyway, do you have this this clip that uh, she was asked about Vince at his retirement? I do have this clip. It was going around on Twitter. It is Linda McMahon with a man that has to be seen behind her, just bulging eyes. And <laughs> there's a whole other story with whoever this guy with Linda is. But here's Linda McMahon being asked about her husband, Vince McMahon, leaving WWE. About the biggest story right now with Vince leaving WWE. What, yeah, what are I'm your thoughts? I'm not going to talk about Vince and WWE. I'm here to talk about AFPI. <laughs> I, I was just wondering what your thoughts were on him deciding to leave. I, the fans of wrestling are, are, you can't believe it. Well, you know what? He'll just be deciding on how he's going to spend his free time. I think that's a good thing. Thanks. Are you concerned at all about the investigation? No. The hush money investigation? Come on. So I told you I'm sure. here to talk about AFPI. What is AFPI, by the way? AFPI, I will find out right now. Well, there was the little, uh, you could hear Linda winking in that. Maybe he'll have to find figure out what to do in his spare time, and that's a good thing. She's been sitting, well, not for the last number of years, but she sat for 30 or 40 years and watched Vince get up early in the morning, go to bed late at night, and never stop working in between. And so she probably figures now, you know, is is he going to be forced to actually, I don't know, do something normal? He should move to Mar-a-Lago. Boy, that way he would be there with all of his his friends. But, uh, you know, but you can tell she's like, yeah, now he's going to have to figure out how to be a normal person. So AFPI is the America First Policy Institute. <laughs> we should have known. She's got her own fucking con. She's working. And well, she's also Lin AFPI's chairman of the Center for the American Worker. Oh, boy. Center for the American Worker. How come all of the right wing anti-communist shit sounds more communist than anything else? I'm here to help the American worker, unless you're an independent contractor, in which yeah. case you're on your own. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here to help the American worker. I'm here to help the American worker out of their uh, retirement benefits, their health insurance, their 401ks, and all of that other stuff that my workers didn't used to get. Miss McMahon, I have $300,000 in school debt. What should I do? Get a job with WWE, sleep with my husband. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but anyway, so Linda's down in Florida putting America first, and Vince is up in... Greenwich or Stamford or potentially New York or one of his condos putting the paralegals first. Hey, you brought up what she did say, and she didn't say much. And clearly she did not want to talk about this. And you can understand why. What she did say, is that telling to you? That it wasn't, oh, it wasn't really anything warm or, or helpful to Vince in any way. It was kind of just, eh, he'll have to do something else now. Yeah, well, no, she's... Uh, she can't be, she's out working the political fucking con, not the wrestling con. So she can't say anything uh, complimentary to or warm to or defensive of or whatever Vince because then she'll look bad when all this stuff and who knows, maybe she doesn't know everything that's going to come out. Uh, but no, of course she's not going to take up for him because she's working her own fucking day. She wants to get back in with president pig shit and his whole crooked crew. Well, I think she's in with them. I don't think that's the problem, but well, I mean, she wants to get back in, in with, he wants to get back in and she wants to go with him. And that's, I'm sure that's, uh, 
Because a lot of people said, well, why didn't Vince and Linda get divorced? If Linda could have got half of everything. Right now, they're still married. If Vince was to kick the bucket, I'm assuming that she'd get a lot of everything. And or she got, what, 80 or $90 million to run for Senate twice. And you know, those, those Republicans, they're all family values and stuff, unless your family's getting shot or on welfare or you know, needing to get actual papers to live here, then they don't like those families. But they don't want some divorced woman running for office, for heaven's sake. Do you think Vince should embrace it? Everyone knows I'm fucking around. Everyone knows I like younger women. I want more people to know. And just be seen everywhere with women on his arm? Yes. Like and, 89 but, flair? But here's the thing. You can't blame Vince McMahon for liking younger women because how many women exist that are older than Vince McMahon? Think about that. That's a good point. You have cut the fucking potential dating pool down drastically if you only go for women your age or older, you know, and then you've got to hire an assistant to get them in and out of the car. It's going to be interesting to see what he does. He has few billion dollars and he didn't want to go you know walt disney and i'm not comparing vince to walt disney sorry vince but walt disney when he kind of got pushed out of his own company in a sense with his brother running things that's when he went and hung out in his backyard with his mini train and that's when he put together the idea for disneyland which he started on his own without the disney company behind him do you think vince is gonna do you see him just sitting at home? If he really is disconnected from WWE, and I don't, we don't know that for sure. Well, I mean, he's, he's as far out as you can get because look at this. His daughter is co-CEO. His son-in-law is head of talent relations and creative. His hand-picked executive that he brought in to, you know, potentially make the company worth more to sell is a co-CEO. Jeez, I mean, he's as far out as you can get. And Kevin Dunn is still there, and that's obviously a Vince guy. But uh, so uh, the question remains as to how far out of the WWE Vince is or is going to be. But to answer the question you were about to ask, and I didn't give you a chance to, there's no goddamn way in hell that Vince McMahon is going to start collecting seashells and taking extended vacations around the country. He's going to work on something, he's going to do something, he's going to make something. If they were to basically shut him off or not take his suggestions, advice, commands, orders, wh however they're presented on what the WWE should be doing or whatever, he's going to find something else that he can run and call the shots on and build into something and tell people what to do until he's physically incapable because that's what he'd said before i'm going to work until i'm physically unable to work and that hadn't changed it just what he's going to be doing might have changed but that mental fucking stance that vince has is not going to change it's not like he's just ah oh, fuck it i'm going to the pool did he shut down because xfl was owned by was it another company alpha entertainment or something that he started yes when he, I guess, sold the XFL, technically, right? Did he sell the XFL to The Rock? I'm trying to remember what exactly happened now with the XFL. Did it go into bankruptcy or did he sell it to The Rock? I am I don't think it went bankrupt because I don't think it was far enough along to, but they did, Rock did purchase from some entity. So the question you're asking is, even if he sold the XFL, is there still an alpha entertainment? Right. Does he still have an... Entity, does he still have a company, something where he could very quickly, if he wanted to do something, mobilize? And of course, we have to be honest, outside of wrestling, Vince has not succeeded really in any of the entertainment ventures he's tried over 50 years. Well, and to be honest, all the businesses that he has failed at were somewhat related, except for the XFL, were somewhat related to wrestling, but just not enough for the wrestling fans. <laughs> the the wrestling-themed restaurant 
didn't really work out well because, as I've mentioned before, when you think of fine dining, the first thing that comes to your mind is the WWE. The Bodybuilding Federation was was kind of wrestling with no fucking fighting, even to the point where Luger was in it. But, I mean, just that was Vince's mistake, thinking that anybody in any mainstream numbers would want to watch muscular guys go out and pose as a as a dramatic series. Um, he promoted the Rolling Stones that failed. He promoted you. He promoted a uh, Chavez. Uh, no, he promoted Sugar what? Ray Leonard. Did he promote Sugar Ray Leonard in a fight that bombed, even though he was one of the hottest fighters of the moment? Oh shit. That's right. Well, and also he evil was Knievel. part of the, uh, he was part of the evil Knievel snake river Canyon, but that was so long ago. That was 50 years ago. But what about the, I was there on the creative team when they bought the Debbie Reynolds Hotel and Casino. Do you remember that? Oh, I remember. They were going to actually open it up as a wrestling-themed casino, weren't they? Yes, until they didn't. And I'm trying to remember, but part of the thing with Debbie Reynolds, apparently, had had a casino that was branded under her name in Las Vegas, but it wasn't on the Strip. It was way off, hell and gone to the side of things in a not a heavily trafficked area. And it had fallen into some type of disrepair as well as ill favor with the locals. And they bought this thing for like $10 million, as I remember, and were going to do that big wrestling casino, whatever. And then the, I, I can't remember all the details, but they found out a bunch of shit of why that that probably wasn't going to be a, a good thing to do or a good place to put their money. And they ended up, I think, selling it at either a loss or maybe a break even a few years later, the property. But that's the point. Whether they've been related to wrestling or not, Vince's track record outside the core business, as they say, has not been good. But, I, I, you know, that's the problem is I can't see him doing anything as another wrestling promotion because then that would be devaluing or potentially trying to devalue if it was successful something that he still owns the majority of so it's it's not like he's going to start a promotion to compete with the WWE because he still owns most of the WWE and and what he doesn't own most of the rest is owned by his family and cl close friends yeah he's gone from any active role but if the stock goes up Vince makes money yeah. That doesn't change. So that some people have been, oh, would he, you know, I mean, not even the ridiculous Vince McMahon's going to all elite. No, that's just delusional. But it wouldn't be delusional if, if the situation was different and they had run Vince out of the WWE and he didn't own that much of it and his kids were still not in charge of it. I can see him saying, okay, motherfuckers. I did it before I can do it again and starting something that would try to run the WWE out of business. And that would be interesting. But right now he's it. He's in. If you magnify the financial situation about 4 billion times, he's in the same situation as I was when they released me from my consultants deal with WWF. That meant that I was not allowed to be involved in the developmental program anymore, but I still own a significant part of the company that was providing their developmental services. You so should, you should give him a call. Yeah, maybe I can commiserate. See Vince, yeah. remember what, what uh, your deputy fornicator, John Laurinaitis did to me 15 years ago. Well, now you're in the same situation. If Vince is truly out of the picture, even though he retains his shares, and of course that means voting power, but let's say he's just, that's it, I'm done, I want nothing to do with this. Do you think there's any chance WWE moves from Connecticut? Ooh, well, I don't think there's a chance of them moving from Connecticut as long as the current ownership is in place. If they sold to a major corporation, then the, uh, probably anything would happen, but they're not going to, they're, they're they're trying to move into their new building in Stamford. They haven't got that far yet. Which they're renting. They own Titan Tower, selling that, get it off their books, and then they're renting space. Yeah. And well, they didn't want to buy another $30 million building because they say, well, if we don't sell this year, we'll sell next year or the year after that. Because Fox may say you're coming to Los Angeles in a few years. Yeah. 
And plus the old place, you know, they had a woman that come come in and cleaned up once a week or so, but it was getting drab. But then Vince started sleeping with her and it screwed everything yeah, I know. up. Whoa, ho, ho. No, but you know Triple H and everyone loves Florida. That's what I always think about. I wonder if Vince, even though he has a place in Florida too, but if Vince was truly out of the picture, I wonder if there's enough of a pull to keep it there or if there's going to be forces saying, hey, let's move to Los Angeles. Hey, let's move somewhere else other than Stamford, Connecticut. Well, I'm sure if everybody, you know... If you lose Vince and Linda's political power in Connecticut, I mean, I'm really trying to think of all the benefits now. No, but still, it's a billion-dollar company headquartered miles from New York City. And can you imagine the expense and the cost of... Besides the fact they'd have to be pulling out of an agreement with the new building that they've made that they haven't even moved into yet, the expense and the cost of moving everybody, talking about relocating office employees, if they they didn't want to go, replacing them, all with the idea. I don't think they're going with the idea that we're going to build this thing for 25 years from now anymore. I think they're going with the idea that we need to make sure that everything is as good as it can be in the next couple of years for the rights fee, renegotiation, potential sale, whatever the case. They're not thinking, oh, golly, it's not Vince and Linda as the young couple ready to beat the world anymore. And they're not thinking, oh, imagine what this will look like in 30 or 40 years. It's like, no, let's let's just make sure we're doing okay and see what happens. We got a good deal coming up here in a couple of years either way. Well, we'll see what happens in the world of Vince and Linda.